everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kirsten and today's video is going to be how to do your makeup for an interview. So for a job interview or something like that. And when I first started interviewing years ago for anything, I always looked at videos like this because I wanted to feel professional and put together because sometimes I like to wear like pink eyeshadow, which is really fun. But for an interview setting, I do think it's best to stay on kind of the neutral route with the exception of if you're interviewing for something where creativity is very encouraged, look up what people suggest about interviews with that specific company or whatever it might be. Because if you're interviewing for a makeup company or a makeup artist position, you know, somewhere like that, you might want to be a little bit more creative. But this is just kind of what I would suggest if you want to wear makeup for a business interview of some sort. This is what I would suggest doing and how to apply your makeup and everything like that. So I will also be suggesting at the end of this things to wear and not wear and how to potentially wear your hair. So just some different options, just so that you have kind of an understanding if this is the first time you're seeing any of my videos. I have very dry skin. I'm obviously very fair. So that might, you know, differ if your skin tone or skin type is different than mine, but it should be like pretty similar for anyone across the board. Um, when we get into the hair, I have straightened my hair, so hopefully that helps you guys just to see kind of what I'm what I'm starting out with. So, um, like I said, I'll mention some clothes that I think are good options um, to wear. And yeah, with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into it. The first thing that I do anytime I get ready is put on SPF or sunscreen. I guess we'll just jump into kind of like what I'm looking for out of my makeup for an interview. I want to feel confident and put together, but I don't want to look like I'm about to go to a runway or to a party or something like that, personally. You guys, like everyone has their own preferences, but this is what I'm doing before an interview, okay? I'm gonna let that kind of sink in for a minute and then we'll add some primer, but I always like to do the eyes first. So another pointer is that do your eyes first if you're gonna use any kind of like shimmer shades. I feel my most confident with a little bit of shimmer on the lid, okay? So, you know, I'm not gonna do anything like excessive or anything like that. You can do an all matte look, and I will start with like an all matte look and show you that option. Then I will just add a little bit of shimmer on top to show you what I would personally wear. Base this on what you feel most comfortable with. If you only want to put two or three products on, then that's fine. But I really love makeup and I like the process of putting it on. It kind of can help relax me before an interview. So if you have the time and if you like makeup and if you want to apply this, this is what I would do. So I would do want to suggest two palettes. I have a high-end one and then a drugstore option or affordable option. So the high-end option is this Natasha Denona Glam Palette. This is just a very neutral palette. It doesn't have anything crazy. Personally, for me, if I were to use this for an interview, I would only be dipping into like the lightest shades here because I'm so fair. But this is very good, I think, for any skin tone or any of your preferences because it does have a lot of depth to it. So if you're in a like more fair complexion like I am, I would avoid using anything too dark. Now, if you want to use like a dark um, lash or a dark shadow to put on your lash line, that's one thing, but I would not put that like all over the outer corner personally. Now, however, if you do have deeper skin tone, then you might want to do that obviously because the different depths are different based on everyone's skin tone. So that's just a pointer that I want to mention with that. But today I'm going to be using this palette. This is a ColourPop Going Coconuts palette. And this is a lot more affordable. Again, it's a very neutral palette. It's got a little bit of cool, a little bit of warm tone, but it's, it's pretty neutral. So this is what I'm going to be using today. Any kind of palette like this, you can even use like your bronzer and your highlight to do this look, but I just like to use eyeshadow palettes because I have them. So this is the one I'm going to be using today. So you can either put concealer on your eyelids or you can use something like this. I'm going to use an eyeshadow primer. This is the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. I have it in the shade Light. So I'm just going to put this on my eyelids. I like to use a primer every day. I just think it makes the shadow look a little bit more even and everything. And I'm just going to use this brush from Practic. I don't, or Pract, I don't know. It's the Sigma Sister Company. It's just an angled foundation brush, but I just find that this blends out eyeshadow primer very very quickly and I don't like to spend too much time just blending out a primer. So I'm making sure to put this here too like in this kind of nick between my eye and my nose as well as bring it out to the edge of my eyebrow as far as I might bring any color. For today's video I am mostly going to be using these brushes from Spectrum Collections and KJH or Katie Jane Hughes. So I just washed these yesterday. If you have brushes 
if it has pigment in it. So for instance, I see this one right off the bat that's got a lot of pink in it. I would try and avoid using a brush like this. However, if you've got a, a brush that's dirty, but it's got more of a, a beigey color in it, then that's fine too. I don't wash my brushes between every use. By no means do I do that. So just pay attention to what color is already in the brush because if you're picking up a nude and you have a pink in the brush already, it is going to come off obviously more pink you know, on your eyes, um, which for today's look is not what I'm going for. Okay, so the first brush I'm going to use is the number 19 brush, but if you don't have this collection, just use any brush that's kind of similar to this. This is just a small crease brush for your eyes and it is pretty fluffy, so it's not gonna pack on the color too harshly or anything. And for starters, I'm just gonna go in with the, the shade that's closest to my skin tone and this palette is called Shredded. This might be different for you. If your skin tone is darker than mine, you might need to use one of these other shades, but I'm going to tap my brush off and use this all over the eyelid to just kind of set down that base. So I'm really loading my brush up in here, tapping it off, and you see all the powder that's coming off, and then putting that everywhere that I just put down the eyeshadow primer. And I'm making sure to blend this all the way up to the brow. Personally for me, I don't wanna bring any color up really above my crease, which is this area here. So I'm gonna go into kind of like the next lightest shade, but I'm thinking I wanna go kind of more, the more cool tone route. So I'm actually gonna dip into this one here called Colada instead of going into Lovely Bunch. You can use any kind of like transition color um, for your skin tone or from the palette that you have. But again, I tap my brush off and let me pull you guys closer. Okay, hopefully this is better for you so you can see where I'm putting it, but I'm just going to start on the outer part and just lightly build this up. I don't want to put too much of this on my eye because I don't want it to be too deep by any means. So I'm just gonna start building this up on the outer corner and into my crease here. Okay, I'm happy where that depth is at. So I'm gonna go back into the shade I used first with the same brush. I haven't changed the brush at all. And I'm just going to blend that to kind of mix it in with those two shades that I put down. So I'm bringing it slightly higher here just to blend the a little bit deeper shade, the transition shade into that skin tone shade. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other eye. Okay, next up, I do wanna add a little bit of depth here in the outer corner. So I'm just going to mix together these two deeper shades. Again, tap my brush off. I don't want any pigment to be too bold right off the bat. I'm just gonna start kind of pressing this here on the outer corner, just very lightly. And I'm even going to put the rest of it on the other eye before I do too much blending. So you can just start blending this in to the outer portion of your crease. And I'm just gonna do that one more time. But this time I'll just start with the other eye. And again, just blend that out once you've already laid the pigment down. Again, I'm still using that same brush. So I'm just going to wipe this off on the back of my hand. You could also use a towel for this. And I'm going to go back into that lightest shade again, really load my brush up, tap it off, and then blend one more time just over everything because I really want this to look pretty soft. Also keep in mind that on camera, it's going to be slightly more washed out than what it's looking like in person. So it looks just a hair deeper in person, but I don't think it's enough that, you know, you would be seeing a whole different look if you were here in person. Again, if you want more depth and you like that, then totally go for it. But I'm just trying to keep everything pretty neutral. So now I'm just gonna go in with my finger to that lightest shade again, and I'm going to press this onto the inner part of my lid. This is what I would do if I were just going to wear a matte look, if that's what you preferred. I'm going to use my ring finger here to kind of blend those two things together. And it just kind of lays the color down evenly on your lid versus having a little bit of those pigments that we were just blending kind of patchy on your lid. So this is something that I would do is just kind of press that light matte shade on your lid so that you have one solid color right there. I'm going to pick up that exact same brush with nothing else on it and just kind of blend around those edges all around where we just put that. So here it would be optional. I'm not going to do it, but you could dip into the deeper shade just slightly and add a little bit more depth here on the outer corners if you wanted to. 
So I'm just going to leave it like this. You could leave it like this, period, and that could be your look. You can kind of see how when I'm looking at you, there's a little bit more depth on the outer part here, but nothing is overwhelming or anything. I think it just makes, you know, it kind of accentuates my eyes a little bit, but not over the top. So um, like I said, I really like shimmer shades, but I don't want to do anything like too glowy. So instead of taking a shade on my hand and like swiping it across my lid, which would make it look a little bit more bold, I will actually use a brush for an occasion like this, which is why I wanted to do my eyes before my face. So I'm going to use the number 14 brush for this. This is kind of a flat brush that has a point to it. And I'm just going to pick up a shade. I'm actually going to go in with the middle one here, Cocoa Crush, just a little bit. I'm even going to press it into my hand first and then just swipe it lightly over the lid. And you can see by doing this with a brush, it's just giving a little bit of shimmer, but nothing too much. So again, I'm going to pick that up, put it on the back of my hand first, and then add a little bit. Okay, hopefully you guys can see here that it just adds a little bit of shimmer, but it's nothing too crazy. I'm going to go back in with that fluffy brush, not adding anything else. And again, just kind of blend the edges out. So this is a very, very soft, neutral look. I just think that it's the best way to go for an occasion like this. All right, before I put my mascara on the eyes, I'm just going to go ahead and put my primer on my face. I do like to use a primer that's a little bit hydrating but it's not necessarily glowy. I'm sure if you guys have seen any of my videos, you know that I really like glowy makeup, but for an interview, I would prefer to have a more kind of satin to matte look. So I'm not going to, you know, put on too much product. I'm just gonna put on about this much of this First Aid Beauty um, Ultra Repair. I gotta remember what this thing is called. First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Primer. So I'm just going to rub that in and this just kind of adds a little bit of moisture because I'm going to be using a powder foundation. So I like to have a pretty moisturized base before I do that. So the sunscreen will do that for you if you don't let it sit as long, but I like to let it sit and really sink in for a few minutes before I put my foundation on if I can help it. Okay, so as far as some more depth goes, I am going to take an angled brush. This is the one that has a spoolie on the end. It's the number 23. And I'm going to dip into that deeper brown. And I'm just gonna put this here on the outermost part of my lash line. I'm not gonna bring it in except for kind of where it would meet that shimmer shade. And this just adds a slight bit of definition to the lashes without being overwhelming. I think it just makes them look like the tad bit more full. And I like to add this. I would not use personally a black shadow for this because the brown's gonna be a little bit softer. And I also think that using an eyeshadow just makes it look a little bit softer than, you know, a pencil liner or a liquid liner would. So for now, it's going to be it for eyeshadow. I'm just going to put on some mascara. I'm going to use my Lancome Montier Big Mascara. For an interview, use a mascara that you know and that you know isn't going to flake on you or smudge or anything. So I'm just going to use this one because it's the one I'm using right now. And I usually clump up the mascara. I usually go for like three coats at least. But for this, I'm not going to do that much. I just want a little bit of definition. Even though I love the way kind of loud, big eyelashes look, I don't want an interviewer to only be looking at my lashes, if that makes sense. So I, again, I want them to be listening to what I'm saying, how I'm answering their questions and paying attention to that more so the way that I look. So I don't wanna you know, draw any attention to any features more than others for that reason. You can also curl your lashes here if you do that. I personally, don't curl my lashes just because mine pretty much go up a little bit anyways. I don't know. I've just never really liked to curl them. So that's actually all of the mascara that I'm going to put on my lashes just to give them a little bit of definition but not build it up too, too much. I'm also only doing the top lashes right now because when we finish the face, we'll come back and do the bottom lashes. So like I said, I am going to be using a powder foundation. So I'm going to go ahead and put my concealer on first. I typically don't do this. I've done it a handful of times when I'm using liquid foundation, but for powder foundation, you kind of have to. Um, so I'm just going to use a little bit of this Too Faced Born This Way concealer. This is a very reliable concealer in my opinion, and I know where I kind of need it. So if you've got 
any blemishes that you're wanting to kind of give some extra coverage to, go ahead and pop that on those. I'm just gonna do one half of my face at a time. And to blend this out, I'm going to use my Rare Beauty Concealer Brush. This one works really well for spreading out concealer. But if you need another suggestion, I would just either tap it out with your finger. You can use a sponge. Honestly, I didn't even wet my sponge today because I knew I was using a powder foundation. So I'm just going to use this brush, but you can use any brush that's a little bit more dense. So something like this brush here, it's a little bit more fluffy than the Rare Beauty one, but it is very dense. And so it does like fit underneath your eyes really well. And don't worry too much about this, you know, evening, in, evening out all of your, your skin. That's not what this is for. This is just so that when you put your foundation on, then it has your foundation can even out the rest of your skin tone. So another tip is, in my opinion, not to cake up the makeup too much for an interview because depending on, you know, your personality or whatever, if you're nervous and you start to sweat, you know, if you're a more sweaty person, you know, like you don't want to get really stressed in a full face of makeup, you know what I mean? So you don't want any lines coming down. So I think less is more in this kind of setting and just stick with something natural, stick with something that you're comfortable with. And, you know, the whole point, in my opinion, of putting on makeup for an interview is just to kind of boost your confidence. You know, you're going in there, you want to feel your best. And this is one way that helps me feel like I look my best and feel like my best. So I think this is enough concealer for my preferences. As you saw, I just put it underneath the eyes, on the cheeks, and then I did bring some excess over my nose because it is kind of red. So you can put it like here, I've got, it's a freckle, it's not, you know, necessarily a blemish, but you can, you know, kind of add that over something like that if you want to. So for foundation, I'm gonna use this Bare Minerals Original Foundation. You don't need a lot. Like when I opened it, a lot came out. Dump some back in there. I mean, you really, you just need it to kind of coat the bottom. Hopefully you guys can see that. You just need a little bit. You're gonna add some more, like this isn't gonna cover your whole face, but just use about this much at a time. Uh, when I kind of put it all in one area, it's, hopefully I can show you here. It's just this product here. So I'm just kind of shaking the can to where that's in the middle. I'm using the brush, the Bare Minerals, what is this called? Beautiful Finish Brush, it's meant for this foundation. I don't wanna use any other brush, I really like this one. So their whole thing is swirl, tap, buff. So you swirl it in the cap really, really well. Like work the product in there super well. I'm picking up everything that I put in there, which is why I don't want a lot. Then you tap it off. Then you buff it on your skin. So I'm just gonna start doing that. I'm gonna kind of work in like one cheek at a time. If you have this foundation, just use a very dense brush for this so that it will, you know, buff into your skin. So I'm working in light layers here and I'm just buffing this in. It just kind of evens out the skin tone versus a little bit, you know, more redness over there. So again, I'm just gonna add a little bit more and kind of build that up in this area before we move on to the rest of the face. I would rather build it up twice on either side than have too much and it look a little cakey. If you do put a little too much, just keep buffing. It will even itself out over time, but it's better to work in small layers in my opinion. Also make sure liquid or powder foundation and I've got foundation like flying everywhere, sorry, but make sure when you're doing your makeup, especially for a setting like this, that you drag it down your neck. This one's a pretty good shade match for me, but it can happen to where, you know, it's a little too dark or something. You don't want that line right there on your jawline. So you want your neck to match your face. You want your face to match your neck if you can help it. So go ahead and drag that down. I'm using this foundation because it actually does leave a pretty good healthy glow but it's not glowy. So um, I like that because I can't really go overboard with it. Sometimes I can tend to do that with my cream products. And so I kind of use this because I know whenever, whenever I use this that I'm going to have to use powder products over it, which in my collection at least tend to be less glowy than my cream products. So I just find that to be better because you'll see when I start to use like my bronzer and blush and stuff, it's gonna give it like a little bit of a healthy glow, but I'm not gonna be using anything with like glitter in it. So I just find that this is kind of my best bet for this sort of situation. Again, I'm not going for perfect coverage. I'm not trying to have full coverage. If this isn't enough coverage for you, you can always add a little bit more concealer underneath it before you put this on. So just kind of keep that in mind if you are using this specific foundation. 
All right, next up are cheek products. I'm going to go ahead and go in with my bronzer and highlight. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow Duo. I've got it in fair medium. I use this because I know it. I'm comfortable with it. I know that I like the way the bronzer looks. Sometimes when you're getting ready for something like this, you might be a little bit nervous or anxious. So go for products that you know and that you love and that you know will not fail you. So I've got a bronzer from like Nabla, a couple of them, like the Too Faced Milk Chocolate one. If I use too much, you can tell. And so sometimes when I'm nervous, I put on a little bit more than I'm realizing. So I want to go in with something like this, that even when I build it up, it is still going to look pretty natural. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this here. It will blend out pretty well. So um, I'm using the number five brush from the KJH collection. So I'm just going to build this up around the perimeters of my face. Do whatever your preference is here. I don't like to put too much of anything on for this kind of occasion, but I do want to, you know, look, you know, nice and sculpted. So I know right now we're all wearing masks. Um, I would personally do my full face, even if I was wearing a mask, because I would feel more comfortable with it. Especially if you got like a Zoom interview, go ahead and do this whole thing. I'm going to do my whole face, but you know, at the end, if you don't want to put on like a lip product or something because you're going to be wearing a mask, then you know, throw on a chapstick. So again, with bronzer, I would go ahead and bring it down the neck because I don't want any, you know, darkness here not to be matched anywhere else. I don't want it to look out of place. And I also put it here along the jawline because I think that it just kind of like sharpens your face a little bit. So again, mask or no mask. I don't know when you're watching this, but um, yeah, I just wanted to, to kind of give you guys any tips I can think of because I know when I was starting to do interviews for anything, this is something that I like to watch people's videos and I feel like no one makes them as much anymore. You know, it's not like they don't make them, but they're not as common. So I hope that this can help you. So hopefully you guys can see here, I've got my bronzer on, but it's not like over the top. It's not, you know, when you look at my face, at least in my opinion, I'm not looking at like one specific thing. My lashes aren't too bold. My bronzer's not too dark or orange or sculpted or anything like that. I just want it to look like effortless you know I want it to look a little a little enhanced but not not past that line so I hope I'm, I hope I'm getting my um I hope I'm getting my point across here for what I'm going for I'm also going to use this highlight for highlight don't use anything too glittery or anything like that this is pretty much all I would want to wear and I'm even going to tone this down here in a second on an everyday I love caking this stuff up you guys I mean I think it's so pretty and you know, even for today, that'd be fine. But I am going to go in with my foundation brush and just put a little over this because, again, I don't want anything taking away from what I'm coming in with, my, you know, my accomplishments and my goals and my personality and my work ethic. I don't want anything to, like, outshine or distract an employer or future employer, potential future employer from that. So, again, these are all just tips. You can also you know, tailor them to your preferences, what you want to do, how you want to look or feel. This is just a starting point, and I hope that it helps some of you guys. For blush, I feel my most confident in this blush, I gotta be honest, you guys. So, I personally would not pick anything too pink or too orange or too this or too that. I would go with a nude or a mauve color. So, I want to go with something a little bit, like, pretty natural. You can go with, like, a pinky brown color that's a little bit more neutral and kind of looks almost like a bronzer but not quite and I just want to put this on the apples of the cheek for an interview I'm not going to do the trend of pulling it over the nose even though I do like to do that um, on a daily basis I just want a little flush of color so it's not too much you guys probably know I love to pack on the blush I'm not going to do that today so this is really like I sometimes have to kind of pull myself back from putting too much makeup on in these kind of instances but I always feel better when I do that then if I kind of just do a normal face of makeup, I kind of feel like I maybe put too much on. So again, this is kind of what I'm going for here. Nothing too much. I'm just putting it on the cheeks just for a slight flush. I'm not bringing it over the nose. I'm not going to put it, you know, on the temples or the chin or anything like that. Just going to keep it pretty basic. Moving on to brows. My brows don't need a ton of, they need some grooming. They need some like plucking or threading or something. But my tip for brows is going with a light hand so if i'm again if i'm nervous i'm more likely to put too much product in them i'm going to use this milani weekend brow pen
pen. Um, if you're if you're a little beginner with brows, I would go in with a powder versus a pen. But I do find this is pretty natural. So all I'm doing here, I'm holding it at the end very loosely so that I'm not going to be too harsh with it. And with me, I feel like when my brows are full or bold, when I see myself in the mirror, that's all I see. So personally, I don't like full block bushy brows on myself. All I want to eliminate here is like, see here that little sparse area? I just want to color that in so that it's not drawing attention. I also want to put some right here. And I'm not going to like completely color that in, you know, you want it to look like your hairs. So again, over here, I've got one right here. And then I just kind of loosely put it in everywhere, but I'm looking, I'm looking in my mirror, I'm looking in the viewfinder for some sparse areas to fill in. I'm putting a little bit of structure underneath the brow. I am holding this like so loosely though. I'm really kind of trying to make them foolproof for myself. Another tip I have for this is if you have time, get ready as early as possible. Don't put yourself in a position where you're rushing to get ready, whether it's a Zoom call or not, you know, be prepared first. Um, you know, as far as like getting ready, yes, but be prepared in your, your interview answers. So, you know, look over your resume, you know, your resume, right? Like it's your life, but read it. Trust me. I was in an interview a few years ago and I had put a club on my resume and I, I was in the club, um, in school, but when you don't remind yourself of your experiences in those clubs or at that previous job or school or whatever it might be on your resume, you forget. <laughs> um, if it's not what you're doing right now, sometimes it's hard to think of an example of something that happened at that specific role. So I was in a leadership role in this particular organization at my school, and I was asked to give an example of a time I exemplified blank at this role. And I thought, oh my gosh, I forgot to even put that on my resume. I'm like, this was years ago. And so you don't want your resume to be too outdated. But if you're young, you know, you're in school, sometimes you got to kind of draw from, you know, three, four or five years ago. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially if it's whenever you were in school. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, this particular thing was from like freshman or sophomore year in college. And um, or I think I used something from senior year in high school. And I was probably a sophomore in college when the interview came around. I'm just setting my brows, by the way, with this Essence Clear Brow Gel. But just read through your resume. Come up with examples. One thing my dad taught me, actually, was to look back on my, my previous jobs. At this point, I think I probably had, like, three jobs on my resume. Look back on them and find, find examples from those jobs that you can use it for multiple answers. So, for instance, you look back at a, at a job and you think about a situation that happened. Maybe it was a... A mistake or um, a an error that you had to fix or something that really you know brought you together as a team or something pick something that really stands out and figure out a way that you can answer multiple questions with that exact response so what I mean by that is like look back on the example pull out of that example a way that you exemplified leadership how you worked with a team how um, you you learned time management from it or something like that where you've got at least like two or three things that come from that one specific example and you are ready to tell that answer so in my experience in an interview if they put you on the spot sometimes it's hard to think about that stuff so go ahead and have it in the back of your mind without overwhelming yourself which is why I like that tip so you pick kind of one thing from each individual job and so if they ask you something you've got you know three or so options of things you can answer them with but you were already prepared because you reminded yourself of specifically how that instance went down and like what happened in there. Um, and so I really think that that's a good, solid interview tip. So just go in prepared, get ready early, no matter what, get there early um, if it's in person or anything like that. Um, and, you know, be at your computer early. If it's a Zoom call, practice, make sure your camera's set up, make sure your background's not too loud or crazy. It's a pretty plain, uh, plain wall. There's a lot of things that you can do. And if, if it's something that you guys want, I will make a video as far as like just some interview tips as far as how to feel confident in the interview, how to, an how to answer questions. I'm not a professional by any means, but I take a lot of classes in college regarding this. I've had quite a few interviews in my personal life. So if that's something that you guys want to see, let me know. I know that's not makeup content, but you know, hopefully that 
these kind of small tips throughout this video are helpful for you guys. But with that being said, let's like continue the makeup. I'm just going to pick up the same brush earlier that I was using for all of my eyeshadow. It's still got a little bit of product in there. So I'm just going to pinch the brush, and put this underneath my lash line. If you need to, you could pick up that transition shade, but mine, my brush still has plenty of product. So I'm just going to put that there. My biggest thing with interviews is just to be prepared. I'm like, I could just drill that in all day long, have practice interviews. It might feel silly, but when you're put on the spot, it gets a lot harder. So you might think, oh yeah, I, I know my life story. I know, I know I worked the jobs, right? I can talk about my experiences, but in my experience, practicing beforehand really helps. Have mock interviews with your friends. They might get a little awkward. That's fine. Call your, your sibling or your parent, your significant other, whatever, ask them. Practice it in the car. Just honestly, like ask yourself questions and answer them in the car. Um, I'm putting one little bitty coat on the bottom lashes, just barely even um, adding any product there. That's my biggest tip, I think, as far as like, you know, getting ready. Yeah, you look put together, um, which is great. And then it's important too. Like everything's kind of just as important as one another, but I really think that being in that mindset of being confident and like, yes, I am capable of doing this job. You know, don't sell yourself short. You're also interviewing a company. So there's a lot of things that are, there's a lot of parts to it. Um, you are more than your resume and you gotta, you gotta show that in the interview. So that's the one thing that, um, that kind of stinks. You don't have a lot of time to really showcase everything that you're capable of. So anyways, for lips, I'm going to go in with this KKW Beauty Lip Liner. It's in the shade Nude 0.5. For lips, again, I don't want anything glossy. I don't want my hair getting stuck in it. I don't want anything bright. I don't want it to end up on my teeth if I can help it. So a pretty neutral lip look should get the job done. Again, masks. Curse and a blessing, honestly. Like, if you got something on your lips, they're not going to know it. So, or on your teeth. Um, yeah, so I think this is just a solid way to go about it. Um, I want to use kind of, I want to use kind of a more matte lip because if I've got my mask on, it's not going to get all over it. Uh, just makes you feel more confident. I don't want to gloss on that. I can feel when I'm talking, sticking to my mask or anything. So especially if it's on Zoom, you know, you shouldn't have to wear a mask. So um, yeah, this is just pretty standard what I would do. So again, that's that lip liner from KKW Beauty. And my go-to nude lipstick for a situation like this is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk lipstick. So any kind of a nude shade, nothing too pink or purple or, um, well, I guess brown's okay. Like it's a nude color. So I would just pick what your most confident nude lipstick is and a formula that you trust. This is just a pretty neutral look. I don't think it can get any more basic than this, but um, I feel pretty confident in it. My skin, you know, has like a healthy glow to it. I feel like I look like myself but just, you know, a little bit enhanced with makeup, I guess. And bottom line, I feel, I feel more confident. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's move on to some other pointers about how you dress. So, um, we'll start out with hair. Okay. So I used to have really long hair. I had a, about a foot cut off my hair. So, um, up until my wedding, I had hair down like to my hips, basically. Um, I personally believe, and this is all, this is all my opinion, okay guys, like take this with a grain of salt, do what you want. These are just my pointers and what I feel the most professional in. So first of all, if you don't know what your dress is, so you can ask a company, you can kind of look it up and see if they've told you before, but if you get an interview, typically a company will say, this is business professional, this is business casual. Um, ca casual, if someone tells you, a business tells you something's casual, even if you guys have like a meet and greet and then an interview, like maybe the next day or something, don't dress casual, okay? Like when they're saying casual, they might specify that you can wear jeans, okay? If that's the case where, you know, typically I would wear like a dark wash jeans, no holes, not too tight, you know, a very kind of straight cut jean um, and a nice blouse, okay? Don't, don't show up in a t-shirt and shorts, Nike shorts, gym shorts, anything like that. Jean shorts, like nothing, like wear jeans, and a nice blouse if they specify that you can wear jeans. If they just say casual, it is my personal practice that I just go ahead and wear slacks and a blouse. I feel much more confident. If I show up to a place and I am underdressed, I'm gonna feel self-conscious. Then going into an interview, I'm not gonna feel confident. So I think dress to impress. I wanna dress as good as possible and I'm gonna feel my best. So I always 
try to dress business professional unless it's specified otherwise. So if they say business casual, anything like that, I basically dress business professional without the blazer or the jacket. So hopefully that helps. Um, ladies, wear close toed shoes. Don't wear anything where your, your, no, your toes are showing. It's a little bit more improv, more casual. That's a no-no, um, in my opinion. Let me actually show you the shoes that I wear to interviews. These are the shoes that I wear to interviews. So they are pumps, they've got a heel. Um, you don't have to wear heels by any means. I feel a little bit more like confident, professional with a little bit of a heel. This is probably about three inches, three and a half or so. Nothing too crazy. Don't, you know, don't show up wearing like pumps, stilettos, like, you know what I'm talking about. Don't show up wearing five inch heels. Um, I personally think pointed toe shoes look very classy, very professional. This one's got like a little bit of a kind of faux animal print here, but um, I just think that this shoe all around looks very classy. If you've got a shoe that's really beat up and you've worn it a lot, if you can afford it, invest in another shoe. This one is from the brand Circus. It's a sister company of Sam Edelman. It's literally called Circus by Sam Edelman. I will try and link these shoes down below. Sam Edelman is a designer. It's a de designer brand with a designer price tag. However, the Circus brand is kind of a more like junior brand, but their shoes are still really, really great quality. Uh, between the Circus and the Sam Edelman brand, I've probably got at least 10 pairs of shoes from him. So it's really my go-to brand. I really suggest them. So um, I would suggest something like this, a black shoe, unless for some reason you're wearing brown. I typically only wear black for, you know, like a business setting as far as being professional. Most clothes that you'll find will be black. So I always wear this shoe or something very similar. You can wear black flats. Um, if you're going and you know that you're going somewhere, I had an interview for an internship one time where it was like kind of a weekend thing and um, they took you out on like an excursion to like get to know each other. Wear flats. Um, don't be don't be wearing these because you don't know if you're gonna have to like walk in the grass or do an activity. Sometimes companies want you guys to do activities together so that they can see how you work together and you don't want a heel to be holding you back from looking and, and, you know, looking your best in that kind of situation. Okay. So anyways, I think that's probably enough about shoes. I really suggest this one or something like it, a black closed toed shoe, pointy toe, in my opinion is kind of a plus. I just think that they look really professional. Um, the pump, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything taller than this. Make sure you can walk in it. If you can't walk in pumps, don't, don't wear them. Um, there's nothing wrong with wearing flats in my opinion. It's just make sure that they're closed toed and that they look, they look nice. You know, don't wear anything that's got like that are meant to be more casual. You know what I mean? Like the um, the fabric, usually I, I find like the, the pleather kind of look um, just looks a little bit better, but I try and avoid like fabric looking shoes. So hopefully that makes sense. Like anything that looks like cotton or something, that's kind of what I'm going for. So hopefully that kind of helps you as far as the shoes go. Um, as far as clothing goes, feel comfortable, but be put together. So we're just gonna be kind of talking about business professional here. If you need something like slightly less dressy, just take your jacket off, take your blazer off or whatever. So I personally don't wear dresses or skirts to this kind of situation because I don't know about you guys, but if like you're outside, I don't want nothing to get blown up. Um, if you're sitting down, I don't wanna to have to worry about like pulling my skirt or my dress down. Um, there's a fine line between like what's too short, just right. Like I, I don't like that. I wanna feel, I don't want to think about what I'm wearing. I just, again, I want people focusing on my answers. I don't want people focusing on my makeup or my hair or my clothes. I want that to all look very put together, but I want it to look like it just goes together and that it it looks right on me and on my body and that I'm just, I'm put together from the outside in, ready to go for an interview, feeling confident. So I feel the most confident in those shoes or something similar with black dress pants, black, black slacks, with a belt on, always wear a belt, tuck your shirt into the belt. You can wear a blouse that has a little bit of pattern, but usually solid colors, like one solid color. I wouldn't wear like a black shirt with black pants, for instance, but um, you know, a white button up shirt or I'll put some pictures on the screen while I'm talking about this, of things that I think look nice. Um, you know, the pantsuit joke, whatever. If you don't feel confident in it, then wear the skirt, wear the dress by all means, just look up what that would mean as far as business professional goes. But I find the easiest way to dress business professional is going with the slack option. So 
Um, yeah, I usually like to go with something that's solid color or like minimal print. And I put a black blazer on over it. I want a blazer that matches my pants, one that's comfortable. Um, you know, make sure that you can, you know, pull your arms out, tuck your arms like, you know, like this. You don't want it to feel like tight. At least for me, I feel very constricted and like stressed in that kind of clothing. So just feel comfortable, okay? Um, I think that kind of speaks for itself. And hopefully from the pictures I've been putting up, you guys can see what I'm talking about. So those are things that I feel are the best things to wear. So let's move on to hair. Like I mentioned, I used to have really long hair. Um, I think the best thing when you have really long hair is just to pull it up. You don't want it, you know, falling. So, my hair was really long, okay? So if I'm sitting at a table, there's a chance that like my hair, the bottom of it is going to like end up on the table. And that just can be distracting for everyone. So my best advice is straight hair or like prim and proper curls. I think that those look the best. I don't want to go for like beachy waves or anything like that. Um, I think in the past, my go-to has always been a slick back ponytail. I don't personally don't want anything in my face. So right now I've got, you know, pieces of my hair cut to be kind of those like curtain bangs or whatever, like face framing pieces like this. I don't want those in my face because I don't want to be like pulling it out in front of my face or whatever. So my go-to, and I'll just do it loosely here for you guys, is just a slick back ponytail. It might not be the most flattering, but I do think in a professional setting that they are the most professional. So I don't even have a brush over here, but hopefully you guys will get, be able to get the gist here. So I just make sure to brush all of my hair. I straightened it, like I said, I don't want any, my hair's kind of poofy. So depending on your hair texture too, um, if you have naturally curly hair, I would just try and make it look um, a little bit like tamed. I know curly hair can get pretty frizzy. I would just avoid that. Um, something else not to do, don't wear a ponytail like I'm about to. This one's cheetah print. If you've got like a black or a solid, you know, colored ponytail that matches your hair color, use that instead. I've got some, but they're not right here. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to be using this. So I think that I would feel the most confident like this because I'm not taking anything away from me speaking, right? Like my hair isn't everywhere. It's not taking over my face or anything like that. I think that this is my best bet. I would wear some stud earrings or something very calm. Don't wear anything crazy. Um, again, I will put some pictures up here of earrings that I think are interview appropriate. Anything like a small hoop that is just metal without any, you know, rhinestones on it or anything. Any simple, um, just stud earrings. I don't have any in right now, but I would wear like a stud earring. Um, you can see here, I have a piercing in my ear. I don't take that one out. It stays there all the time. Um, but if you have any like excessive jewelry, like I do have more piercings on my ear, I would stick to the first hole or maybe the first two if you always wear those. But I personally would not show up with like my ears studded out. Just personal preference again. Um, I also don't wear earrings every single day. So I would just put some studs in. Don't wear any jingly necklaces um, <laughs> or uh, bracelets. Um, I do have a tattoo here. I wear a watch right here when I go because I want it to kind of be covered. I don't want anyone concerned about some places like still don't want you to work there if you have tattoos. So I like to just go ahead and cover my bases and put a watch on. It makes me feel better. Um, day to day, I don't really wear one there, but I, I do put a watch on for an interview. Um, I just, I have like a Fitbit or something. So I just put that on over this and that just makes me feel the best. Um, I don't want any attention drawn anywhere again. So I'm not gonna wear any like jingly um, bracelets or necklaces or any earrings that are really loud. I do wear this necklace. This is the same necklace I wear almost every day. It's just a pretty basic necklace. You probably won't even see it because this isn't a dressy shirt. Um, I know this was a super long video, but I really hope that some of these tips can help you guys. I know that when I started my interview process, this was really helpful. I think that a makeup look like this hair and then like the clothes and stuff that we talked about is really going to help you feel your best, which is what you want going into an interview. So just remember that you're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. You should feel confident in your resume. You probably worked really hard for it. Um, you know your worth and 
the company just needs to learn that about you. So I think going into an interview, just be confident, but not arrogant and, um, you know, show them what you have to offer and see if you guys would be a good match for each other, not just if you would be a good match for them. They also need to align with your goals and your values and where you want to see yourself, you know, in the future. With that being said, um, if you guys have an interview coming up, good luck on it. I hope that some of these tips help. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave those down below. Or if you don't like to leave public comments, you can always send me a DM over on Instagram. I will also have my Instagram link down below where you can find me there. I'm happy to answer any questions. Again, I'm not a professional, but this is just some tips and tricks that I've come up with over the years of doing various interviews for everything. So um, yeah, I think I've got some more tips if you guys wanted to hear those, a dedicated video just to the tips and tricks of interviewing. But um, I know there's a lot of videos out there like that. So anyways, like I said three times already, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you guys will consider subscribing for some future makeup content. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.